So, vamos a grabar la sesión de hoy para poder tenerla en nuestra página de internet para poder, a poder compartir esa información con el colegio. Si no les molesta. So, good evening, everyone. Good afternoon. So, we're going to get started. Um, just an FYI, we are going to record the session just to have it on our website so we can share with others. Does everybody here speak Spanish? I must start with that. Or does somebody here does not speak Spanish? So we're going to try our best to do Spanish and English as we go. But if everybody's fine with Spanish, let us know so we don't have to do both constantly. But we will continue to do Spanish and English as we go. Esta sesión la vamos a tratar de hacer en español y en inglés. So vamos a tener conversaciones y vamos a, así como vayamos, vamos a ir interpretándonos para poder compartir y para los que no hablan español también para que nos puedan entender. Um, nuestro español no es perfecto, so por favor si hicimos algo que no es que no es como debería de ser, nos avisan para poder corregirnos. So um, in Spanish, our Spanish is not perfect. I was saying. So if those of you who do speak Spanish, if you hear say something that's not the right way or other ways of saying things, please let us know. We are all learning together. So my name is Margarita Baez. I am the Assistant Program Director for the ESO de Lante at Kenyatta College. And I'll be helping or co-presenting this De Pasas Explorando Racismo with my coworker, Nimzi. She'll introduce herself. So, buenas tardes, mi nombre es Margarita Baez. Um, soy asistente I don't know how to say assistant program director. Pero trabajo con un programa en Quiñada College que se llama Eso Adelante. Y voy a estar um, presentando esta sesión con mi compañera Nancy, que ya se va a introducir ahorita. Sí, buenas tardes a todos. Um, yo soy Nancy García. Mis pronombres son um, she, her, hers, ella. Y yo soy la coordinadora um, del programa Eso Adelante. So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Nancy Garcia. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm the coordinator, the program services coordinator for Eso Adelante. Um, para empezar esta sesión, queremos hacer un reconocimiento de las sierras en las que estamos. To start this session, we want to start with a land acknowledgement um, in which we are in. Um, Entonces queremos empezar con nombrar um, las tribus donde estamos ahorita y um, reconocer que la tierra que ocupamos es ocupada, que hay, habían antes de que nosotros llegamos aquí mayordomos que cuidaban y que vivían en esta tierra y que fueron desplazados de sus hogares, um, como hoy es el día um, de indígenas, uh, de reconocimiento de indígenas. Uh, también queremos reconocer que la tierra donde vivimos es ocupada. So to start off, um, we also want to acknowledge the tribes of the land in which we are in and to recognize um, that there were stewards of, the, of this land before we um, moved here um, or before we lived here and that we now live in occupied land and that those tribes were displaced, but they are still around um, and they are still here. Um, eh, y este mapa uh, enseña um, las diferentes tribus um, o las gentes nativas de California y en la área de la bahía um, era la tribu Ohlone um, que vivía en esta área. So this map shows the native people um, in California, the different native tribes. Um, and for the Bay Area, we live on Ohlone land. Um, and yeah, so that is our acknowledgement. This is, este es nuestro reconocimiento de la tierra en que estamos. So para hoy vamos a tener nuestra agenda es, um, vamos a empezar con introducciones para ver quién estamos aquí. Vamos a repasar unos acuerdos comunitarios y vamos a tener unas preguntas que pusimos para poder compartir nuestras experiencias y luego tenemos oportunidad para hacer 
preguntas y respuestas. Si en cualquier momento usted tiene una pregunta o, un, o algo que le cruza la mente que quiere compartir, también pueden usar el chat de, de Zoom para compartir con el grupo. So we're gonna, this is our agenda. So we're going to start with some short introductions to get to know who's in the room. And then we will go over some community agreements as well as, well as sharing out where we have some questions. So we'll go over a couple of things just to hear your experiences. And then we'll end with some Q&A. If at any time you have any questions or anything comes to mind that you want to share, you can also do that through the chat. Okay. Queremos saber quién está en asistencia. So, si pueden um, compartir su nombre, su posición, si trabajan en el colegio o la área de estudio en la que están y por qué uh, están aquí hoy, por qué vinieron a esta sesión. So, we want to start with having folks share their name, um, their position if you work at Cañada College or your major and also to share a little bit about why you're here. Uh, si prefiere hacer la introducción usando la chat, si no se siente cómodo hablando, uh, puede hacer eso. Um, pero si no, vamos a empezar con llamar los nombres de los participantes aquí. Um, if you want to introduce yourself using the chat, if that's what you're more comfortable with, you are more than welcome to do so. But we're going to start by calling out the different names um, that we see here starting with uh, Luis Romero. Luis Romero, no, no te escuchamos. Buenas tardes, Luis. No, no te escuchamos. Creo que miro que estás hablando, pero no te escuchamos. No, no te oigo. Ahora sí me escuchan. Ahora sí, sí, continúe. <laughs> Uh, buenas tardes a todos, mi nombre es Luis Romero. Uh, uh, mi mayor es uh, inglés y español. Y me llamó mucho la atención del título de, de la charla, de la conferencia, porque yo pienso que es muy importante conocer todo lo que está pasando en nuestra comunidad. Y porque es algo muy, uh, es algo que está muy presente y que a veces damos una opinión, pero no la damos bien porque no tenemos las bases, porque no tenemos los fundamentos, pero pienso que charlas como estas nos pueden dar más información para poder hablar del tema y poder hacerlo de una manera correcta. Muchas gracias, Luis. Uh, al siguiente tenemos a Carlos Pacheco. ¿En inglés y en español o solamente en español? Que que pueden los dos. Yeah. Um, so, Uh, hola, soy Carlos Pacheco. Uh, yo trabajo en Foro College, pero estudio en Cañada y estudio uh, la comunicación. Uh, y yo estoy aquí hoy simplemente porque siento que es una um, manera de honrar a las personas indígenas. Um, so, hi everyone, my name is Carlos Pacheco. Um, I work at Foro College, but I study at Cañada. Uh, my major is Communication Studies. And I'm here today because I feel this is a small way to honor um, on my part, um, to honor Indigenous folks. Thanks. Welcome. Gracias, Carlos. Thank you. Um, next, we have Devin. Hi, my name is Devin McNally. I am, my major is, uh, let me see, it's, associate's degree in business and I am here today because it's required for a class. Well, welcome Devin. I think next we have Lina Lebedeva. Did I say that right? Yes, that's correct. Hola. Hi, Lydia. So, I'm a student of Spanish in Cañada College for algunos years. Y estoy aquí porque este tema me interesa y quiero saber en qué podemos ayudar a nuestras comunidades. Así es. Gracias. Y, yes. Sorry, in English, uh, my name is Lydia. Originally, I am from Russia. And uh, I study Spanish language in Canada College. 
and I'm here because the topic of this conversation is very interesting to me, and I want to know in uh, what way we can help the community. So, thank you. Thank you. Gracias, Lidia. Um, siguiente tenemos a Melissa Maldonado. I was muted, sorry. Hello everyone, my name is Melissa Maldonado. I am the Basic Skills Retention Specialist. Buenas tardes a todos, mi nombre es Melissa Maldonado y soy la especialista de retención de Cañada. I was also a Cañada College student. I graduated a while ago and I'm happy to be back as a staff member now to support the community and serve as much as I can. So, estoy aquí para, como me gradué de Cañada también hace unos años, Y ahora estoy de regreso como trabaja, trabajando en Cañada y me da gusto estar de nuevo para ayudar a la comunidad y a ustedes como estudiantes. Gracias, Melissa. Sigue, al siguiente tenemos a Nadia Sigona. Oh. Hola. Mi nombre es Nadia Sigona, uh, consejera académica aquí en Cañada College. Y el día de hoy eh, quiero eh, participar no solamente para ayudar a los estudiantes de mi comunidad, pero también para aprender un poco. Bienvenidos. Gracias. Gracias. Uh, y para terminar tenemos a Victor Gómez. So to wrap up we have Victor Gómez. Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Victor Gómez. Estoy estudiando en Cañada College. Um, estoy trabajando en Medigri o en la universidad. Tengo mi certificado en Child, uh, Early Child Education and uh, Human Service. Y estoy aquí porque quiero aprender sobre racismo y cómo poder ayudar a la comunidad. Y quiero aprender sobre el racismo en la comunidad o cómo podemos ayudar o aportar a la comunidad sobre ayudarla o support, su, su, ayudarla, mejor dicho. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias, Víctor. Y me equivoqué. Tenemos otra persona, Saúl Miranda. Hola. ¿Me pueden escuchar? Sí. Ok. Hola, me llamo Saúl Miranda. Yo soy el coordinador del, um, del, del Centro de Soñadores. Uh, I'm the Program Services Coordinator for the Dream Center. Um, a ver, uh, ¿qué más? Oh, estoy aquí porque este tema me interese, interesa. Um, uh, I, 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 why am I here today? Uh, this topic uh, is actually really interesting. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm interested in this topic. Uh, while I was at UC San Diego, I, uh, I studied on um, casta paintings, and in a way, this overlaps for sure. Um, cuando estuve en la escuela de UC San Diego, uh, yo estudié um, que se llama casta uh, pinturas de casta. Um, y es así. It's translated like that, right? Uh, pero uh, es por eso me interesa, interesa este, este uh, tema, porque estudié de los castas, uh, paintings. Yeah. Pero muchas gracias. Y qué bueno que mencionaste esto, porque lo vamos a ocurrir um, después. Um, thanks for mentioning that, because we are going to cover it later on. Um, but we want to start with setting some community agreements. Uh, we are going to talk about race, racism, um, and our and personal experience in this session. Um, and that can be an um, uncomfortable topic, and it also opens a space for uncomfortable um, situations. So we want to have some ground rules to um, navigate the way that we are going to communicate today. Um, vamos a empezar con unos acuerdos comunitarios porque vamos a estar hablando de temas un poco pesados de, del racismo um, y todo eso. Entonces queremos tener unas reglas para 
establecer cómo nos vamos, cómo vamos a comunicarnos y cómo vamos a sobrepasar uh, la incomodidad que tal vez podemos sentir. Uh, los acuerdos comunitarios que tenemos es empezar, empezando con el respeto. Entonces, tener paciencia con uno al otro y tener el entendimiento que todos somos diferentes y que tenemos experiencias y conocimiento diferente. Um, so the first uh, community agreement is respect. So being patient with each other and understanding that we are all very different and that we have a different way of perceiving things and different experiences as well. Un micrófono. Um, eso significa que cuando una persona está hablando, les damos el espacio para que ellos puedan hablar. Y si tenemos otros comentarios, um, tenemos la, podemos usar la chat para agregar cosas o podemos esperar nuestro turno. Puedes um, usar la función de alzar la mano si quieres comunicar algo. So the next one is one mic. Um, that means that when one person is speaking, we give them the space so that they are able to share their thoughts. Um, and if you want to add any other comments, um, instead of cutting someone off, you can use a chat or you can use the raise hand feature um, so that we know that you want to share something next. Tomar un paso adelante y tomar un paso atrás. Esto significa que si tú eres alguien que no ha compartido mucho, que no ha participado mucho, que tomes un paso adelante y hagas una pregunta o hagas un comentario. Um, un beneficio de estar en línea o estar virtualmente es de que no tienes que hablar. Puedes usar la chat todavía para um, comunicar y para platicar y para participar en la conversación. Y tomar un paso atrás si has, has compartido mucho para darle el espacio a los otros para que también ellos puedan compartir y hablar. So we also have step up, step down. Um, step up if you're not uh, participating too much um, to step up and to share, ask a question, give some commentary. One of the benefits of being virtual is that you can use a chat and you don't actually have to speak up. Um, to participate and to engage. And if you're someone who's participating a lot, sharing a lot, that's great, but also give others the space to be able to speak up and to share um, their voice and their experiences and their thoughts. Um, y después tenemos experimentar incomodidad y explorar el por qué nos sentimos incómodos. Um, tal vez un, una, un tópico o un tema um, o un comentario que alguien hace te hace sentir incómodo um, o no sabes cómo reaccionar y eso es bueno, um, especialmente, especialmente si escuchas algo que te hace pensar diferente. Um, es bueno sentirnos incómodos y explorar por qué nos sentimos así. Um, so the next thing is experience discomfort and explore why. We may hear different opinions or things that we might not agree with and it might make us uncomfortable to hear those things, but we can explore um, and experience that discomfort of why we're hearing this thing and try to take it as a learning experience. Um, y el último que tenemos es disentir con la idea, no la persona. Entonces, si alguien dice algo Um, y tú no estás en acuerdo con ellos, puedes disentir con la idea que ellos presentan, pero no necesariamente estás um, en desacuerdo con la persona. Entonces se trata de conversar sobre las ideas, no sobre las, la persona que está haciendo esos comentarios. So the last thing that we have is you disagree with the idea, not the person. So if someone says something that you don't agree with, Um, you're not disagreeing with them as a person, you're disagreeing with the idea. So that's what um, we're having conversations about, not personal facts. Um, ¿Alguien tiene más algún otro acuerdo comunitario que le gustaría agregar? Does anyone else have a community agreement that they would like to add? Entonces, si estás en acuerdo, um, si puedes hacer un thumbs up. If you are in agreement, if, um, if you could do a thumbs up.
Ok. Es ok for me. Gracias, perfecto. Uh, entonces vamos a empezar con las preguntas para compartir. Um, y estas preguntas um, las hicimos en parte por el episodio del podcast que compartimos, que no tenías que escuchar para poder participar en esta conversación, um, pero queríamos usar estas preguntas para guiar nuestro modo de pensar um, sobre el tema de racismo contra las personas negras y contra pueblos indígenas y hasta nuestras propias per, uh, personas latinx. So we based these questions off of um, what we got out of the podcast episode that we recommended. You didn't have to listen to it to participate in this conversation, um, but we wanted to have these questions to guide um, a conversation around racism against um, Black people, um, Indigenous people, and even our own Latinx people. So, vamos a empezar y con estas preguntas ustedes pueden compartir sobre el chat o si quieren hablar pueden levantar la mano las reactions o decir en el chat quiero hablar para poder darles el espacio. So, questions as we go, if you want to share, you can either raise your hand, let us know that you want to share, or if you prefer to just put it in the chat and we can read them off of the chat for the group. Um, but let's make sure we all um, raise our hands or, or some, of some sort so we can take turns. So I'm going to start with question number one. So la pregunta número uno es, ¿cuáles son algunos de los estereotipos que ha ustedes escuchado sobre personas negras? Pueblos, pueblos indígenas o Latinx o algún otro grupo. What are some stereotypes that you have heard about Black people, Indigenous people, Latinx, or any other groups? So if anybody wants to share. Y si te acuerdas también si puedes compartir de quién escuchaste estos estereotipos. Mm -hmm. So, and if you remember, if you can share um, who you've heard these stereotypes from. Luis, veo que tienes la mano ahí. Uh, hace un momento estaba escuchando el, el podcast que, que nos uh, sugirieron y ellos estaban diciendo de que el imperialismo y, el, y la colonización blanca nos había separado por, uh, por diferentes grupos blancos, negros, morenos y que esto no era una, una cuestión normal, de que lo hicieron para beneficiarse para que nosotros peleáramos, para que nos sintiéramos diferentes. Y también mencionaban algo muy importante de que nosotros, de que, de que el imperialismo y el blanco era tanto que nosotros ya no lo notábamos. Porque a veces cuando somos pequeños y habían dos niños, y un niño era blanco y un niño era moreno o negro, decían, ay, qué bonito es el niño blanco, o qué bonita es la niña, la niña blanca. Y, y nosotros crecimos con eso, Y sin quererlo y sin pedirlo, nos hicimos a esa imagen. Y a veces hablamos de la misma manera a nuestros sobrinos, a nuestros primos pequeños, y seguimos con eso. Entonces, nos han envuelto tanto que ya lo absorbimos y lo seguimos haciendo y no lo, y no lo, y no lo uh, ni siquiera nos lo notamos, ni siquiera nos damos cuenta que lo estamos haciendo. Uh -huh. Um, but I'll traduce, to translate a little bit of what you said, because you said so much and it was awesome. Um, from the podcast, you've, um, you, you, you remember that they were talking about imperialism and how with imperialism, they um, ingrained the idea that whiteness was superior. And so um, we took that mentality to create divisions amongst ourselves. And then from there comes the comments of appearing to be more light-skinned or to have more um, European um, characteristics um, as being better, as being superior. And these are things that we say about our own family members. Más o menos? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, y eso, y eso es muy común, ¿verdad? Escuchar de familiares um, cuando nace un bebé que, oh, qué bonito se ve porque se parece rubio. And that's something that's really common, especially among family members, like when a baby is born to say, oh, this, this baby is so beautiful because they look very light skinned or because they look um, like very European like. Yeah, Carlos, estás tomando? Carlos, you raised your hand. Yes. Um, so yeah, I just want to add on to what Luis said. Um, not too long ago, I stumbled across a video on YouTube Um, and I forget, I, I think it might be um, Mexican children that were in the video, but basically there, there were um, different children and they put a black doll and a white doll in front of them. And they asked them to pick which one they preferred. They asked them to describe each one. And so they more often than not picked the white doll and they attributed all the, the positive characteristics to, to the white doll. And so, I don't know, I just think that really speaks to how much we convey, um, not only, um, you know, through our words, but also our actions and the fact that this is so deeply ingrained and, um, you know, that even children, you know, they may not know, they, they may not be able to name it, but, but they've already accepted it. Um, and so, yeah, just wanted to add that. Carlos, I, I can, uh, oh, I can uh, say it in Spanish wanna... too. Okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Um, so, um, quería añadir a lo que dijo Luis, hay un video, y creo que son um, niños mexicanos en este video, pero um, ponen a los niños en un cuarto y les ponen dos muñecas, una, una caucásica y una uh, morena o negra, um, y los niños, si, uh, cuando les piden que escogen un, una muñeca, siempre esco, eh, escogen um, la muñeca caucásica o, o blanca, y cuando uh, les piden que ellos... Um, describan a las muñecas todo lo positivo para la muñeca blanca, todo lo negativo para la muñeca morena. Um, y eso yo creo que um, refleja que um, hay, mucho, hay, hay muchos mensaje, mensajes que nosotros transmitimos a través de nuestras palabras y las acciones y que es tan, tan, um, I, I don't know the word for ingrained. Uh, Engravadas. Yes. Uh -huh. Engranadas um, en nuestra sociedad que hasta los niños, aunque no sepan exactamente qué es lo que ellos creen, ya aceptaron estas ideas racistas. Um, so, no más quise añadir eso. Thanks. Uh -huh. Pienso que yo también he mirado el video y lo más triste de ese video es que al final le preguntan a los, a los niños son, y niñas que están ahí, ¿a cuál te pareces más? Y... Ellos seleccionan el muñeco que es más moreno. So I, I think I watched that video too. And the saddest thing about it is that at the end, um, they ask the kids who are participating to choose which one they look more like. And they point to the, to the darker one, to the brown one. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. And that really speaks to the fact that they believe that they're inferior. Right, because all these negative attributes that they've just attached to this black doll, and now they're now, now they're saying that they're like that black doll. And so, what does that mean about how they think about themselves? So, yeah, it, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's the same video. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and Nadia. Nadia. Hola, este solamente con con el mensaje que estaba diciendo el compañero anterior. Perdón, se me olvidó tu nombre. Se me vino a la mente unos dichos que yo crecí en la cultura mexicana. Por ejemplo, que, que ahora que lo pienso digo, oh, qué mal está haberlos este, escuchado o en la familia o con los amigos. Eh, uno es el, oh, qué bueno que te casaste con un güero para mejorar la raza. Ese es uno que se me vino a la mente. Y también el otro, este que era, oh, siempre hay un negrito en el arroz, como cuando siempre hay un problema o algo así. Eh, ese dicho eh, se me vino a la mente que, que crecí en la cultura mexicana que decíamos. Y ahora que lo pienso eh, o lo reflexiono, qué mal, qué mal estaba haberlo inclu haberlos incluido en, en nuestra vida común. Es que los puedes traducir en inglés. Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, now that now that I think about it with the conversation that I'm hearing, I 
uh, I'm thinking about two sayings that are very common in the Mexican culture. One of them is uh, siempre hay un negrito en el arroz, like there's always a black in the rice. Uh, and um, to, to say that could be a problem or, or something negative about it. And then the other one is, I'm glad you, ¿cómo es el otro? Eh, se me olvidó. Que si eh, te con un ah, sí, sí. Eh, oh, te casaste con un güero para mejorar la raza. Like, you marry a white person to improve your own, your, your race. Um, and I, I don't think, eh, now that I think about it, uh, I, I think those were very negative eh, sayings that many of us, we grew up with. Exactamente. Uh, could we get one more person to share, or maybe two more? I can share. Uh, for stereotypes, um, and I'm just connecting more to Nadia's story that, you know, in, in my family, though, this is probably something you know, their, their thoughts have changed. And I'm talking specifically about, you know, like my parents, right? But they're like, okay, there's a pecking order, right? You don't marry someone who's black. Of course, they'd rather you marry someone uh, who who shares my, my race and ethnicity, but definitely you don't marry someone who's black. And then of course, white, oh, absolutely. It's, it's a given that would elevate your, your ranking in society without using those words, but it's very much what they learned in the US as being, uh, there's a racial hierarchy and that white is superior. And of course, you know, Asians need to assimilate and assimilate to more whiteness standards. Um, so I just wanted to, to share that. And I learned it from my parents who learned it from the media everything that you can think about um, in the in the US. In China, and also, I, I don't know too much about uh, anti-blackness in Vietnam, but it definitely probably exists. But in China, there is, I believe, a small um, community of Africans. And now, you know, with uh, just diaspora in general, uh, it's not like fully accepted, but the, it's a blending of different you're seeing a blending of some African cultures in, in, in China uh, for labor reasons. So, yeah, it's just some interesting, you know, uh, things in history, but how it also changes to the time. Voy a tratar de traducir un poco de lo que compartió Mary. Um, y ella habló como también en su familia Um, cuando hablan del casamiento con quien te vas a casar, está bien que te cases con alguien de la misma raza, pero no quieren que te, que te cases con un hombre negro porque eso no es um, deseable. Y si te casas con un hombre blanco, eso va a elevar tu estatus social. Um, entonces en América um, la idea o... Um, la misión es de que puedas asimilar a uh, la cultura americana y casándote con alguien blanco es un modo de hacer eso. Y también hizo un comentario de que en Asia también hay mucha antinegritud, um, aún teniendo inmigrantes negros en los diferentes países, especialmente en China, donde han ha habido muchos africanos uh, moviéndose ahí por trabajo y, y eso. Mm. Yeah. Yo, yo también quería compartir un poco um, de mi experiencia siendo inmigrante, ¿verdad? Yo venía de México, um, por, en el estado de México y en el pueblo donde yo vivía, no reconocíamos a uh, personas que eran más morenas como siendo negras, sino solo eran mexicanos morenos. Um, entonces, cuando yo llegué a los Estados Unidos y sí, ve, um, empecé a mirar personas negras en la comunidad, aprendí de mis familiares que tienes que tener cuidado, tienes que tener miedo, no los debes de confiar, 
son criminales y todas estas ideas yo tenía siete años y yo no, yo no, yo no conocía el país, yo no sabía nada. Entonces yo tomé todas estas palabras como ser la verdad hasta que yo empecé a conocer otras personas negras y hacer amistades. Y eso fue lo que cambió mi percepción. Pero si no hubiera sido por eso, yo todavía tendría esas ideas. Entonces, um, cuando yo reflejo en esta pregunta, en eso es en lo que pienso. So I wanted to share a little bit about uh, my journey being an immigrant. Um, when I lived in Mexico, in Mexico State, kind of like in the center of Mexico, um, we didn't recognize folks there as being um, Black or descendants of enslaved African people. Um, we just recognized them as being darker Mexicans. And so when I came to the United States and I started to see Black people um, who we identified as being Black, I learned from my family members that um, you have to be careful, you have to be cautious, you can't trust them, they're criminals. And I was a seven-year-old and I didn't really know anything about the United States and about the environment that I was in. So I took that to be the truth until I started to befriend and to get to know other Black kids and Black folks in the community. And I started to realize that all these ideas that I had about them being dangerous were wrong, right? Because I started to have my own experiences and I started to develop my own knowledge of Black people as I got to know them. Um, and so being an immigrant, you know, that's, that's another area where you're so prone to receiving stereotypes and to receiving negative and racist ideas about other people, especially when you're going into a new environment and one so diverse as the United States. And so that's something that I was reflecting on with regards to this question. Yeah. Just, looking, just looking for any other raised hands. Yeah, and I think that this kind of leads into the next question. Yo pienso que esto nos lleva a la siguiente pregunta y es ¿Cómo han impactado los estereotipos que han aprendido en cómo tú ves a los demás? So this, again, this leads into our next question, which is, how have the stereotypes you've learned impacted how you see others? And I think a lot of this speaks to what has already been shared, like what you were saying, Nimzi. You felt, you know, when you're told that some race, the Black community, they're, they're scary, that they're going to, you know, that they're the bad ones. So when you grow up hearing those things, that's how you feel. Like, And still now, like, I grew up with that same, you know, experience from my family that Black people are not to be trusted. So whenever you go on an elevator, we always see it. People, you know, clutch their purses closer or move to a corner of the elevator that they want to be close to a Black member. So I think that's, you know, that just feeds into the racism in, in general. And that's why, the, with everything that's happening right now with the whole Black Lives Matter, that's why they matter because that everybody believes these stereotypes of the Black community. Until you grow up, like like you mentioned, Nimzi, when you grow up and you get to experience the community from your own personal, you know, life from friendships, I think that's when we start to learn about different. You know, there always there's always a bad apple in, in, in every group. It's not like all the groups are bad. So I think it's just by by learning from our own personal experiences as we have. Um, and I think it's also like. Like when we, we say, you know, oh, look at that accent. Like what's wrong with people's accents is, you know, they come from different parts of the world. They have accents and people, you know, stereotype those too. So I always look at them and when one grows up with the ideas that the negros, for example, that are the criminals, until growing up with those ideas, one thinks that it's true 
Y hasta el día de hoy, uno todavía cuando te subes en el elevador, por ejemplo, y está un moreno contigo, la mayoría de la gente se va, se va a asustar y va a agarrar sus voces o cualquier cosa y se hacen a un lado. Pero porque son las ideas con las que crecimos. Y uno cambia esas ideas cuando empiezan a hacer sus propias relaciones con las, con las gentes. Cuando haces tu amistad con gente de diferentes razas, de diferentes lugares. Entonces ya vas aprendiendo que you know, cada raza tiene sus personales, ¿no? Cada quien es diferente en, ca en diferentes razas, no todos somos iguales. No para decir, oh, todos los negros son you know, angelitos y todos los mexicanos también, no. Todos tenemos diferentes personas en nuestros grupos. Estoy viendo ver si alguien levanta la mano por ahí para compartir. Uh, Maggie. Dime, Nadia. Una de las cosas que más me gusta de Redwood City, que estoy tan contenta de vivir aquí, es eso, eh, las culturas. Eh, mm. Bueno, ahorita pues es COVID, ¿verdad? Pero me encantaba ir a restaurantes o a lugares y escuchabas tantas diferentes culturas, diferentes lenguajes, todos unidos y son una de las cosas que más eh, me gusta porque donde yo crecí, que fue en el sur de San Diego, en San Isidro, solamente había mexicanos. Nunca traté con otras culturas, eh, con asiáticos, con afroamericanos, incluso de centroamericanos, de, mi, de, de las culturas latinas. No tuve la oportunidad, pero aquí en Cañada y en Redwood City es lo que más me ha gustado. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I love about Redwood City is the cultures. Uh, it's, well, now we, we're living the COVID uh, life, but in a normal life, when you go out to a restaurant, to a park, to any local place, you can hear many different cultures, languages. I love that because where I grew up in South, of, South San Diego, in San Isidro, you only see Mexicans. You, I never had the opportunity to share with any other cultures like Asians or African Americans or even people from uh, Central America or South America. So I, I, I love to, to be in this community mm -hmm. and learn from it mm -hmm. too. Yeah, thank you. We have 15 minutes, um, Nimzi. Do you want to move on to the next question? Uh, la siguiente pregunta que tenemos y para terminar esta um, parte de la presentación es, ¿cómo, es una pregunta interna um, que es cómo podemos cambiar y mejorar el modo en que hablamos de y percibimos a las personas negras, indígenas, Latinx. Um, so the question that we're gonna wrap this portion up with is, how can we change and improve the way we talk about and perceive people who are black, indigenous and Latinx? ¿Vas a compartir, Víctor? Um, quería, te, tengo un comentario de esto. Uh, por ejemplo, uh, yo creo que esta pregunta también se basa, yo creo que como, como los papás, de un, como papá, como padre, educar a los hijos, porque yo tengo una sobrina que vive en Stockton y su papá siempre se expresaba mal de las personas a morenas, la piel oscura, no me gusta decir negro porque es una ofensa, pero lo dije, de piel morena, todo el tiempo su papá le decía malas palabras y tenía una niña chiquita y él, él le decía también, ofendía a los morenos y, y él, él a la niña, la niña también iba aprendiendo con eso y, nunca, y le ofendía también a, los, a la raza esta y nunca le decía nada y esa niña fue creciendo y todo el tiempo ve una persona morena y la ofende y le dice malas palabras. O sea, lo, ella creció así, no, le, no la educó. Entonces, si lo educa uno como padre a los niños y le dice, son morenos, pero o sea, hay gente buena y hay mala, como todos sabemos hispanos que somos humanos y somos buenos. Ellos también, así hay personas. Por ejemplo, yo tuve una experiencia con mi compañía. La mayoría somos hispanos. Y estaba uno de la piel morena. Él era buena onda, buena 
persona y trataba de ayudarnos en lo que podíamos, nos daba consejos, nos decía que si vivíamos el país, pensáramos en ahorrar, cosas así por el estilo. Pero de todo se debe a que uno tiene que educar a los hijos o tratar a esa persona. Eso es todo lo que yo pienso. Sí, es un muy, muy buen punto. Y para nosotros que crecimos con estas ideas o con ese tipo de educación de que ser afrodescendiente es malo, de que ser indígena es ser um, pobre o tratarlo como ser una broma um, o que es malo, debemos de empezar con cuestionar ¿De dónde vienen estas ideas? ¿De dónde agarramos estos estereotipos? Y como Luis estaba mencionando en el principio, muchas de estas cosas si las cuestionamos, ¿de dónde vienen? ¿De dónde agarré esto? ¿Por qué pienso esto? Lo podemos um, trasear hacia el imperialismo. Y la... Su, la white supremacy, ¿verdad? Estas son ideas europeas que fueron usadas para conquistar Latinoamérica, para conquistar no solo Latinoamérica, sino los Américas también. Entonces es importante cuestionar por qué, de dónde vienen estas ideas, reconocer que nosotros tenemos estas ideas y luego educarnos, como tú compartiste, Víctor. Um, So Victor was sharing how um, you have to educate your kids and, and it's important to um, yeah, not raise them in a way that they believe in and that they act in racist ways. Um, and I shared that um, in order to do that, we have to, in, in order to educate ourselves, we also have to question where we get certain ideas from, like, why do I think this, where does this come from? And like Luis was sharing in the beginning from the podcast, they talked about imperialism and how a lot of these ideas come from white supremacy and come from a time when Europeans were trying to conquer, um, not just Latin America, rather like all of America. And they use these ideas to establish their own supremacy and our own inferiority and to divide us. So these ideas come from um, an imbalance in power structures. And so we have to question where they come from, recognize that we have these ideas and then educate ourselves and those around us to be able to overcome them and to be able to change or to make a change in ourselves and in our communities. So, okay, I'll say it in English first, but okay, so th this topic is really interesting to me because especially this, this, this question in particular, um, not too recently at home, con mi hermano, like having conversations about, you know, these shootings and everything and how ultimately like it's it's hard to try to bring sense or just uh, bring, bring clarity to that narrative of the police officer did x y and z but changing the narrative from the black man was at fault and there are times that me and my brother get into it uh, get into arguments because he brings up that, like for instance, like, oh, that black man had a, had a weapon. And it's he, it, 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 having to understand that, just, that the narrative is so important um, that ultimately you have to do the research. You have to educate yourself on seeing not just the situation, but also the, histor the history behind that narrative because it just reoccurs. Um, but ultimately, uh, what I'm trying to say is that educating is very important, just like one of our colleagues or, or uh, one of the other speakers had just said, um, and ultimately shifting that narrative from 
what what everyone else, or what everyone is trying to say. Um, it, a lot comes up, and like you really just have to like experience and put yourself in those situations of basically making friends. What I'm trying to say as well. Um, so there are like two things that come up because like my brother and trying to like shift that narrative in his perspective on the black community. But then there's this other gentleman by the name of Daryl Davis. Daryl Davis is, uh, is an African-American who, uh, if you read one of his books, he, he basically made friends with a KKK member. And ultimately that friendship flourished and that guy, the, the guy that was a KKK member ended up leaving the KKK. But this guy was a grand wizard. Like he was top rank something within the KKK. And what ultimately scares us or scares people ultimately to embrace that racist narrative is, is the fear of the unknown of the other person. Like for instance, like the grand wizard ultimately did not know who Daryl Davis was as a human being, but understood that he was black and I don't like him. But over time of him, Daryl Davis simply just being curious about that grand wizard of not the KKK aspect, but him as an individual, as a human being, it ultimately changed his perspective of, I see you as a human being. And the reason why I bring this up is because like, for instance, with our conversation between me and my brother, I don't want him to have that same fear to always bring up that, like that narrative that we sometimes give, get engraved with by the media. Um, he sometimes embraces that and goes with it, but truly doesn't understand because he also had a negative experience as a child with the black community or with black children growing up. And that trauma, that fear is also instilled I, I don't want to take much time to answer this question, but at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is just if if you do have a fear or you dislike a certain group of people, you have to explore that unknown and make make friendship. Really, just explore that aspect. I is yeah. I'm, I I feel like I'm sad enough. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, so we do have five minutes left, sadly. Um, gracias por compartir, Saúl. Um, tenemos cinco minutos y estamos triste porque ha volado el tiempo. Um, pero gracias a todos por compartir. Um, queremos tener estas conversaciones más porque sí son muy importantes. Um, las tenemos que tener, especialmente en los tiempos en que estamos. Um, no vamos a tener tiempo para, uh, I'll, I'll translate. Um, so thank you for, for joining. We're sad that the time flew by so quickly. It's really important to have these conversations and to have these spaces. Um, and we hope to be able to do this more. Um, we're not gonna have too much time to delve into and have a conversation about Gasta paintings. Um, but I wanted to just introduce them really quickly because um, they're very, very interesting. And I recommend that if you do find that you want to know more about this, that you do some research into it um, and learn more about them because they reveal a lot about um, how the concept of race was ingrained in um, Latin America. So I'm going to share, voy a compartir un poquito um, de los casta paintings y si te interesa, si quieres saber más, um, recomiendo que um, hagas más research y que investigues más sobre estos para aprender porque son muy, interes muy interesantes. Um, entonces los casta paintings um, fueron o vienen de los españoles. Ellos hicieron estos uh, paintings para hacer o diferenciar las categóricas de, um, de niños mixtos o de razas mixtas y era como una uh, 
hierarchy, ¿cómo se dice en español? ¿Alguien? Ok. Pero sí, clasificaban um, qué combinación era más preferida a las otras. Y si investigas, ellos tenían a personas que eran afrodescendientes hasta, el, hasta mero, mero abajo. Y alguien afrodescendiente con alguien indígena también hasta abajo. Pero esta, estos, estas... Um, imágenes y los modos en que ellos clasificaban a las personas también reflejan los pensamientos y cómo pensamos de y cómo miramos a las personas de otras razas en Latinoamérica. Um, so really quickly, um, these paintings were um, by the Spanish. They classified different um, mixings or interracial mixings of children and kind of rank them from preferable to least preferable with those that were um, from um, African descendants being at the very bottom or someone who was African with someone who was indigenous as being least desirable. Um, and it just goes to show and to reflect to us um, the way that we perceive different races in um, Latin America. And it kind of gives a little bit of background as to why we have these ideas and why we see certain people a different kind of way. Um, desafortunadamente, no vamos a tener tiempo para uh, preguntas y respuestas. Unfortunately, we don't have time for Q&A. Um, pero si queremos recomendar un evento que sigue, Um, si quieres pasar más tiempo conmigo y con Margarita, mañana vamos a tener uh, un evento titulado Testimonios, Testimonios de Nuestros Latinx Transfer Students. Um, y vamos a tener estudiantes que se han graduado y transferido de Cañada. Um, y ellos van a compartir su historia, van a hablar de su experiencia siendo Latinx y Um, navegando el proceso de transfer, uh, de transferirse a otra universidad. So before we wrap up, and if you want to spend more time with myself and Margarita, tomorrow we are going to have another event titled um, Testimonies of Our Latinx Transfer Students. So we're going to have a panel of Cañada alumni who have graduated and transferred, um, and they're going to be sharing their story and their experience Um, as Latinx students navigating the process of transferring um, and their experience at their new universities. So we encourage everyone to join if you are able to. Um, and we're going to share the link in the chat. But as we wrap up, if you have any last comments that you would like to share, um, feel free to do so. The space is yours. Wait, we could say anything or not. Yeah. When I learned about the Gasta paintings, that's what started my journey to investigate about my family history. And I'm sorry that we couldn't get to the Gasta painting because that's a very important topic. Um, and that's why I also talked about my brother trying to link it back together. But at the end of the day, Finding more, finding more about your family history will put things in perspective and kind of like engrave that, like if you're anti-black, si eres mexicano and you're anti-black, like do some, do some of your family history because you'll sooner or later find out that in your lineage, you may have someone who was, or your grandmother or grandfather or great grandmother or great grandfather who is Afro-Mexicano or in my case, That's what happened. So when I started doing my family history, I learned about that, how my great grandmother from my dad's side is actually Afro-Mexicano. And I wanted to find more about like, where, what, how, what happened to my great, great grandmother? And you know, that whole lineage. And that's how I educated my brother. 
and start to share more about our family tree to my brother and really get him to understand why you're he's a he's a lot darker than I am I'm very I'm, I'm light I'm, I'm a light-skinned Latino and he's very dark I have kind of curly hair he has very curly hair so to put it in perspective it's like dude our family tree like our ancestors are still in our blood and it's shown on him like completely so just a word of advice do some family tree family tree great point and that really brings us back to the beginning um when carlos was sharing the video or sharing about the video where at the end you know the kids were asked to pick which uh, of the dolls reflected themselves and they chose the one that they viewed negatively um which you know we have to also like look internally like many of the ideas that we hold about others we might also hold about ourselves um so it's a great point thank you so well thank you but it did you want to share, Mary? <laughs> I saw you were. No, I was just uh, thinking about what Saul said, and basically, um, no, just a lot going through my head about just um, the wedge that white supremacy has created uh, for BIPOC and, and what they have to not only internalize about themselves, what Nimsy mentioned what they end up having to internalize about themselves, but then also that um, that wedges have been created to keep people in their place, right? To uphold white supremacy uh, in power. So just kind of thinking all that through. And I think developing individual relationships and getting to know someone of another race is very important because you build compassion and, and you, uh, find ways to, to kind of share in what you might have in common. But I, I also don't think that's enough. I think the responsibility is really calling out that we live in a system of white supremacy for things to really change. So I was just kind of thinking through all that stuff as you both were kind of talking. So just wanted to, to add my last thought to that. Thank you. It's a lot to unpack, and yeah. unfortunately, we don't have enough time to do so. But we'll we'll definitely hold this space again. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you guys for planning. Thank this. you. Thank you. Thank you for this.